Right, good morning. Welcome to Daybreak. Of course, you can text us your views or questions on 2242. Or you can tweet us at Citizen TV Kenya at Samgituku. The hashtag to use is Daybreak. On this conversation that we want to have with the Cabinet Secretary in charge of, uh, I think this is the biggest ministry, roads, transport, infrastructure, urban development, housing, in public no particular works. order that I have put it. Public works as well. Shipping maritime, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Good morning. Morning, 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 Sam. Welcome to Daybreak. And of course, uh, the conversation begins with the situation of uh, affordable housing. As I said, you can text us your views or you can even call us live. We'll be sharing the contacts with you. But let's begin with um, the status of uh, the president on the 12th of um, December 2017 announced that um, he was going to focus on a four big agenda, the big four agenda as we know it today. Part of that is affordable housing. There has been uh, quite uh, some contestation between uh, the trade unions and the government. Where are we in that controversy? Um, thank you, Sam, for inviting me this morning. Um, I think the first thing I need to tell Kenyans is that, um, yes, this is a mega project which, uh, as you know, was pronounced by the president. Um, and to be able to take off uh, such a mega project, mm -hmm. you have to do a major, major groundwork in terms of preparations uh, to make sure things go well. This is the largest project uh, ever undertaken by government. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, we had to do a lot of planning, a lot of preparations. But I'm glad to report that now uh, we have already uh, started the project. Mm -hmm. It is no longer a concept. Right. Um, already, <coughs> if you go to Park Road uh, in Gala, uh, already the project is underway. Mm -hmm. um, the contractor is on site. Uh, they are working 24-7. Uh, meaning 24-hour shift mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that uh, the first project uh, actually goes on very well. Even more importantly, uh, we have uh, expression of interest. Mm -hmm. We did invite uh, applications from renowned developers mm -hmm. uh, and on Thursday we closed what we call uh, Widow One. And as a result of that, we have received massive, massive uh, expressions of interest. Okay. Uh, totaling more than 30 billion US dollars, which is three trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. um, basically meaning that uh, not only shall we meet the objective mm -hmm. and the target set by the president of uh, half a million houses, the 30 billion uh, dollars will be able to give us a stock, housing stock, of about 1.3 million houses. 1.3 million houses. 1.3 million houses. What specifications? Uh, we have given uh, one bedroom. We have given one room. We have given two bedrooms. We have given three bedrooms. But what is most important mm -hmm. is that we have capped the cost mm -hmm. to make sure it is truly affordable. Mm -hmm. We have said that no house will be costing more than two million shillings. And this is what makes it affordable. If you compare the two million shillings with okay. what Kenyans have been used to, seeing apartments in Lovington, Kreresua, other places, Westlands, where apartments have been going as high as 25, 30 million, right. uh, the, which is outside the scope of the ordinary Monanchi. Mm -hmm. So we had to bring the cost dramatically. And if you like, I'll give you details as to how we managed to do that mm -hmm. in terms of bringing the cost down to up to 2 million shillings. Okay, L let me begin it there, because the information that we had earlier, I believe it was towards the end of last year, was that um, a house that is three bedroom was to cost, is it three million shillings? And then a two bedroom was to cost two million shillings. And a uh, one bedroom was to cost about uh, a million shillings, especially for uh, the band of affordable housing. How has that changed that we now have that no house will be more than uh, two million? I think the, the critical thing to, to note is that we are not costing houses according to one bedroom, three bedrooms, and what we have put is to put a cap in terms of cost per square meter. And the cost per square meter- Cost of construction. Of construction. Okay. Has been put at 500 US dollars. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a one bedroom or whether it's two bedrooms or three bedrooms, the critical element is to <coughs> peg the cost of construction at 500 dollars. With that, you can build a room which is not too big, mm -hmm. a room which is big, <coughs> and so forth. But the cost of construction is what matters. Because until now, the cost of construction in Kenya shillings uh, per square meter mm -hmm. has been about 50,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Now, that has been brought down to about 30,000 shillings. And that is a critical element which Kenyans need to know. Okay. So, because you see, you can say three bedrooms, but then they are very small bedrooms. Uh -huh. So the, what is important is to put the rate per square meter. Even you, if you build a house, 
it can be a massive five bedroom house it can be a very small five bed bedroom house mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the bedrooms do not matter in this context it is actually the square meter so when you say that you have uh, expressions of interest amounting to 30 billion shillings who are these dollars are they, uh, us dollars yes 30 billion which US is about, dollars. Three, that, that's trillion about trillion shillings. three trillion shillings yes. <coughs> excuse me who are these are they local investors or foreign or a mix of both in what proportions in actual fact it's a mix between uh, foreign and local and uh, the good thing is that uh, if you to look at the mix of the people <coughs> who have come forward, the prospective developers, these are reputable, uh, both local and international. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a few examples uh, which we are processing right now. Uh, if you recall last year, the president and the entire team, we all went to New York. Mm -hmm. And this UN agency called UNOPS committed, and we signed documents for them to do her housing stock of about 100,000 units, 100,000 units, one unit, I saw one developer. They are teaming up with a company from Singapore mm -hmm. to do this, and already the first batch of that money has been committed. <coughs> so 100,000 shilling, uh, 100,000 units. Mm -hmm. Then you take, uh, we got another expression of interest from a company from the Edo Middle East, who have come and said they will do uh, 140,000. So if you aggregate all those, we are actually getting uh, commitments of, of uh, 1.3 million houses. And that's why we are very confident. We actually uh, closed the window last week and uh, on Thursday, what you are calling window one. And we had a total of 300 developers coming forward. But you know why the interest has grown? Because you may ask, how come mm -hmm. these people are not coming before? It is a structure which we have put in place. This structure, allows people to come and build as many houses as they can because the risk of them not being able to sell them has been removed. Mm -hmm. Previously, uh, developers used to go to the west of Nairobi because people in the west of Nairobi could afford to buy those houses. Nobody was going to the east of Nairobi. Now what we have said is that you build as many houses, we shall buy them off you as a developer. That's a difference which has been introduced okay. which was not there before and the why we are able to do that is because of the housing fund the housing fund which as you know you and i shall be contributing 1.5 percent mm -hmm. uh, every month mm -hmm. and our employer will be topping up another 1.5 percent mm -hmm. by creating that big pool of funds we are able to tell any developer come to this country or if he's a local developer build as many houses as you can but we, sign, we shall sign for you what we are calling a cash-backed off-tick guarantee. Mm -hmm. Cash-backed off-tick guarantee. Upon completion of those houses, we shall actually be able to buy those houses from you. That's why now we've got developers queuing up. Uh, in total, about 300 of them right now. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the supply side, which has been a big problem in the past, has been completely uh, dealt with. I'll come to the question of financing uh, shortly, but first, when you say that 300 developers have already committed to construction of uh, the houses you're talking about, on which land? Well, we have very different, uh, many different parcels of land. Uh, like, for example, I told you already at Park Road, land is being constructed. I mean, buildings are coming up. Mm -hmm. If you go to Makongeni, there is land which was, is currently owned by the pension fund, the pension fund, and we shall do a structure with them where they'll benefit uh, to say, look, they contribute land, the houses be built, and the pension members will be able to benefit from that. From there, we have land in Mavoko, um, which, which is uh, some, of, some of it owned by government, mm -hmm. some owned by NSSF. We have land in Shaurimoya, right? And then build in Nairobi, because we don't want this, this to be a city of Nairobi project. Mm -hmm. We have gone to every county and signed agreements with county gov governors. So far, out of 45, because Nairobi and Mobasa is ex excluded from this MOUs, mm -hmm. out of 45, we have 25 governors who have signed. And they are signing because they are saying they'll provide the land, and then we shall go to those counties and provide uh, the actual housing. All right. So land is not a problem. Even the private sector, eh? Sam, as, as of Friday last week, we had private sector, especially SACOS, mm -hmm. committing more than 6,000 acres of land mm -hmm. in the Nairobi metropolis. And so the issue of land is no longer a big problem. What was a big problem was actually the funding 
of those projects. So let's get into that discussion about funding. When you say that it's 1.5% uh, by itself and 1.5% by the employer, what is the cap now? The cap is 2,500 2, individual, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which means um, up to a salary of about 166,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beyond that, you don't increase the payments, the, the contributions. And there was that controversy or contestation with the trade unions, including the central organizations of trade unions, KOTU, uh, going to court to protest against uh, that. Have you resolved that now? I'm very glad that we have. Um, we have reached agreement, out of court agreement, mm -hmm. uh, with the KOTU. Uh, if you recall, the Sec Secretary General, brother Francis Atwari, mm -hmm. actually made a pronouncement on television. Uh, to say they had entered engagement with government and we had reached uh, agreement as to how that matter was going to be settled. On the 24th of this month, uh, they are going to file the actual formal withdrawal mm -hmm. according to their, to their commitments. Okay. Of the, but already they made the public, public pronouncement and therefore the project is ongoing. So once that happens, when should we expect uh, from our salaries to have that deduction effected? What we are doing now is basically to make sure we complete the final handle, which is to table the housing fund regulations uh, in Parliament. Mm -hmm. Already we have taken them to what we call the delegated uh, committee mm -hmm. of Parliament. Legislation. Yes. Uh, they met with, uh, with our teams uh, last week in uh, Mombasa. They have committed that, um, yes, uh, they will they'll fast track now that Parliament has already opened. Mm -hmm. And so we expect the deductions to kick in from next month, uh, the, ma the month of March. Month next of March. Yes. So this but, but, but let me just say one, one important thing because, okay. um, you know, some we've had the Housing Act since 1967, since 1967, which mm -hmm. is 52 years ago. This is the first government mm -hmm. which is putting into operation mm -hmm. this housing fund. So there's nothing new we are doing. Mm -hmm. All we are doing is we have taken a bold step under the leadership of the president, Hulu Kenyatta, to basically say now, this act which has been there since 1967, mm -hmm. and it's now been utilized, operationalized, we need now to operationalize it so that Kenyans can get, can get what they need, which is shelter. Okay. We do not want to keep on seeing these slums coming up. Mm. We have um, about 6.4 million people you know, living in slums in this country. It is not acceptable. We have to deal with this problem once and for all. The stubborn question has been, yes, you will construct these houses uh, if, uh, according to the promise of the president, is uh, at least 500,000 by 2022. I don't know that we are on cause. Uh, whatever the case, how will you allocate these houses to these people who's, uh, who will be making contribution to the fund? Yeah, that's a good question because um, initially, as you know, the demand is very, is very heavy mm -hmm. up front. People want these houses now but they know the fund is just starting to kick in. Mm -hmm. So to balance off that, what we've done is to create what we are calling uh, a portal, uh, which, are, which has been branded Bomayangu. Uh, we have all those details in terms of um, how Kenyans can access. Mm -hmm. We shall be launching it uh, this week. Mm -hmm. uh, and what will happen is that um, there'll be four uh, the stakeholders who can register in that portal. Mm -hmm. uh, there's developers, who be wanting to say now they can they can be recognized uh, as key players. We have financiers because those, those uh, developers need to be financed mm -hmm. by government. Mm -hmm. We have you and me, the employees. Yes. Yeah, and this is critical because we need to capture your data. Mm -hmm. We need to say some kituku, kituku, how much do you earn? Mm -hmm. um, are you tax compliant? Are you this, are you this, are you this? Mm -hmm. yeah? And then you indicate even there, where would you like to have the house? because you don't want to, uh, to register. Mm -hmm. And I give you a house at the other end of, of the city or the country where you don't need it. Right. And then finally, it will be ob obligatory for the employers to register their members, because that is not an option. If you are an employer in this country, you have to register. Mm -hmm. So four parties you have to register, employee, right. employer, developer, financier. Okay. Yes. All right. So when do you think three, these 300 developers who have come on board, when do you think they can uh, be in a position to finish? Well, what we're doing, that doing is to fast track the evaluation process. Because, you see, uh, because they have come so many, mm -hmm. if, say, more than one are targeting the same piece of land, we have to do some evaluation, mm -hmm. some, some rating mechanism, 
to find the strongest partner which we need. Eh? Okay. Uh, we in intend to complete that by end of this month, the month of February. February. Upon completion, uh -huh. they should start right away. Uh -huh. uh, because all we need to do is to hand over the, the piece of land to them. They have the financing. We don't have to ha have the financing ourselves up front. Okay. We shall require it when they finish maybe now one or two years from now. Mm -hmm. Because by then the FAD we have grown to a substantial amount which can be able to off-tick those units from them. Mm -hmm. yes. So, so th that <coughs> portal, Bomayangu, and uh, let's say it's 2022 and you have uh, 500,000 houses, how would that portal allocate houses to the beneficiaries? Mm -hmm. What we shall do is, uh, like I say, initially the demand is higher, is more than supply. So there will be a lottery mechanism. Because if say who will do it? We, we shall get a professional t uh, team, either professional accountants, all these people who do these things to make okay. sure it is done in a very, very uh, transparent manner. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, you cannot register more than once. All those details will be captured to make sure that we don't get also people applying for 10 houses or people cheating in terms of their salaries. Mm -hmm. Because you see, uh, the people who will be actually we shall be targeting initially will be the ones earning a maximum of 50,000 shillings. Beyond 50,000 shillings, we have created a mechanism mm -hmm. to get cheaper mortgage financing through what we are calling the Kenya Mortgage Refinancing Company, which is domiciled at the National Treasury. Uh, and there, the issue is to make sure the interest is affordable. Because if somebody is earning one million shillings, where do you want to put them in this lottery? Mm -hmm. When we've got so many people below 50,000, some about below 20,000, who require these houses. The one earning a million or so can go to the mortgage uh, uh, market, mm -hmm. but also make sure the mortgages are affordable. And that's why we are saying those mortgages should be maximum at 7% interest. 7% interest, so but um, so you, I believe the mortgage will be commercial? Commercial in a sense, but also affordable. Because you see, until now, we only got 25,000 mortgages mm -hmm. in this country. Reason people are being charged 21%, <coughs> which we want to avoid, right. right? But to make sure we get many people going for mortgages, we would like to make sure that this the, the financing mechanism mm -hmm. draws down the cost. And to do so, we got partners like the World Bank, we got partners like the ADB, mm -hmm. who will be putting seed capital into this, into this uh, mortgage company to make sure the branded cost of financing has come down. So how will the housing fund help <coughs> me if I need a mortgage? No, you see, the, the, the housing fund, you, you are contributing, so you are a member of, yeah? Mm -hmm. So because your details are there, mm -hmm. and you, if you're earning more than 50,000, we shall be able to say, uh, Sam Gituku has been contributing. And therefore, he's eligible mm -hmm. to, be, to be supported mm -hmm. through the mortgage refinancing company. And with that, then we shall be able to now to put you in that bracket, okay. where, which will be forwarded to that company, mm -hmm. and then the banks will take up from there. Okay, yes. all right. Let's focus on the situation <clears throat> uh, with the infrastructure, roads and infrastructure in this country. And uh, I want to begin a few weeks ago when I spoke to the cabinet secretary in charge <coughs> of um, trade and industry, that is mm -hmm. C.S. Peter Munya. He spoke of uh, this stubborn question about uh, foreign investors and local investors. And he uh, spoke of uh, when you have um, local developers given a contract or a tender to build a road, there's the situation or the dis the, the disappointment with capacity that they have, the time that they take, the financing that they, that they take. There's also a feeling that we are so much um, outsourcing uh, foreign companies, especially f from China, uh, sometimes Japan, so let's just say Asia, uh, to come and do these projects. What's the wisdom around this? Well, I think we give very um, equal opportunities um, to, to both parties. Mm -hmm. In this way, um, we realize, for example, the very big roads the fact of the matter is that we do not have adequate capacity for some of these mm -hmm. local contractors. Mm -hmm. However, to make sure that nobody has been locked out of the process, mm -hmm. we have said that local, local contractors can bid mm -hmm. for projects up to one billion shillings. Mm -hmm. There will be no foreign investor or foreign contractor mm -hmm. who will be given those projects. Anything below a billion, we have told the foreign contractors to forget about bidding. Uh -huh. That will be reserved for local contractors. However, <clears throat> even within that one, black, uh, one billion bracket, mm -hmm. we are telling local contractors they must provide, provide good standards of work. Mm -hmm. They must provide good quality because 
you travel to the countryside where these roads are being done. Mm -hmm. And this is a fact. The locals are clamoring for foreign, co for foreign contractors. Mm -hmm. Why? Because some of our locals, unfortunately, have actually disappointed us. Right. Not everybody, but some of them have. Mm -hmm. But to make sure Kenyans get what they need, mm -hmm. we are actually uh, evaluating the capacity of each contractor. And frankly, the ones who are not performing, we are deregistering them, including foreign. Mm -hmm. um, we are blacklisting them. I said it publicly about that road of Enterprise Riconi, this one for Western's uh, Ring Road. Mm -hmm. Total disappointment, mm -hmm. and this is a foreign company. But, so, so those ones, we are blacklisting them, okay. without, without, without a doubt. But the, the, the feeling is that, um, yes, for instance, if you have an expensive uh, road project like Wayaku, <coughs> the cost mm -hmm. is, uh, is it 59 billion shillings? Which Wayaku? Uh, the, the one that is being constructed currently. Or the one going to Red Hill? Yes. No, no, no. no. Or, uh, or the new one? From Jomo Kenyatta Airport to... Not that one. Mm. Currently, Wayaku mm. is under construction. Yes. Uh, okay, between, okay, okay, okay. Is it between Kangemi all yes. the way? Yes, Ironi. Yes. And um, the, the cost, the report we have is, is that it's 59 billion shillings. It's being done by a Chinese company, China Wuyi, if I'm not mistaken. So people feel like um, that's so much of uh, Kenya's uh, resources going out of the country, sometimes outsourcing even the workers that have to come and do it. Why can't we invest in our local contractors and enhance their capacity? We have done a lot. In fact, we have discussed with the World Bank, the IFC, mm -hmm. who set aside uh, a fund to enhance capacity for local contractors. They put about 150 million, mm -hmm. which we are yet to access in terms of enhancing capacity for local contractors. Mm -hmm. But you see, uh, figures, you know, I know figures are thrown here and there. It is not 59 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much, much, much lower than that. Mm -hmm. Because you see, that is part of what we call the Jomo Kenyatta Airport, Riloni, you know, highway. Mm -hmm. We were doing it in three lots. Mm -hmm. One lot was from Jomo Kenyatta to uh, Ole Seleni, mm -hmm. Ole Seleni to Kangemi. Mm -hmm. Then Kangemi, that's lot three, mm -hmm. which was being done. Mm -hmm. The entire project was going to cost about uh, 40 billion from Jomo Kenyatta Airport. Mm -hmm. But what we've done is to make sure that because we don't have the money, we don't have capacity to keep on borrowing money, mm -hmm. we have now engaged local, local developers mm -hmm. to do the road with their own money. Mm -hmm. So like you may heard that from Jomo Kenyatta Airport, although it's Wakakagemi, mm -hmm. we got a prospective uh, private sector player mm -hmm. who will do it with their own money right. and then recover it over time. Mm -hmm. But whenever there is opportunity, we give these jobs to local contractors. Okay. As a matter of fact. And let's speak uh, about a few of the infrastructure projects. I remember on, uh, in September last year, you were in China during the FOCA <coughs> Forum on China and Africa mm -hmm. Cooperation. <coughs> and uh, one of your... Uh, some of the things mm -hmm. that you said after, after that, that, that sitting is that uh, the government was required to go and do, um, what do you call it, um, a study to see the, the feasibility study of the route from uh, Naivasha to Kisumu and also a global uh, study on mm -hmm. the viability of uh, Mombasa all the way to Kisumu. And that was to be done in a few weeks so that you can secure 380 billion shillings uh, that was going to finance the line from uh, the SGR line from Naivasha to Kisumu. How far away is that? Well, because of the magnitude of the project, um, and given that it was, the financing was going to come from uh, the foreign partner, mm -hmm. we had to get independent um, parties to do the assessment, especially nominated by the, by the actual Chinese government. That party has f just finished okay. the assessment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was just been informed this week, and the results are positive in terms of the outcome of the feasibility study. The next step is that uh, that proposal you go to the Minister of Commerce of China, and then from there it will go to China Exim Bank. Mm -hmm. So it is still a process which mm -hmm. has to be followed, mm -hmm. because my deal this is a four billion dollar project, <laughs> which is four hundred billion shillings. Mm -hmm. So nothing can be rushed, mm -hmm. and of course you have to make sure that. Uh, there is value for money, right? Um, and all those factors are being considered. Mm -hmm. So it's a process which I would request Kenyans to be a lot more uh, patient. Mm -hmm. When we are ready, we shall be able to announce. But, but the question yeah. was here is that um, when we started off with the SGR as a concept, went ahead to implement from Mombasa to, uh, to Nairobi, and then phase 2A of uh, Nairobi to Naivasha, one would think that actually a study has been done, and I'm sure you did it, but why would the Chinese government now midway ask for a review of uh, how viable Mombasa to 
Kisumu is? Well, you see, um, the entire project, which is actually from Mombasa all the way to Uganda and Rwanda, mm -hmm. it was segmented into, into, into lots. Mm -hmm. Phase one, phase two, phase two A, phase two B. And each phase, because it was separate financing agreement, had to be assessed separately, mm -hmm. which is what we did for Mobasa, Nairobi, no problems. Okay. Then we done from uh, Moba, uh, Nairobi to Naivasha, no problem because you know we had all these industrial parks coming up. Mm -hmm. But you see, eventually, now we have to look at the entire dynamics of the entire region mm -hmm. and say, will this project be viable all the way to the very end? And that's why they said, Yes, phase one, no problem, phase two, a, no problem. Mm -hmm. But let's see the global picture. Okay. And fortunately, that has come out to be positive in terms of the outcome of the entire global project. Okay. Yes. Uh, so with, with Uganda, was it last year saying that uh, they are now going to focus on um, revamping their meter gauge railway, sort of uh, get stepping away from the SG? Uh, how does that affect the project that Kenya is pursuing? Well, you see, um, both countries, both Uganda and Kenya, mm -hmm. has got meter gauge as well. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot do SGR and also dump your MGR because mm -hmm. it is also a national asset. Mm -hmm. Even for us, mm -hmm. we have SGR, but we have a plan now to revamp also the MGR meter gauge mm -hmm. from Nairobi mm -hmm. to, to Nakuru okay. and to Kisumu. Because this is a network. You don't just look at one trunk and forget about the rest. So even you, in you for Uganda, as they were negotiating for the SGR, they said they still got this line MGR, which is bringing maize, and as we are exporting uh, goods uh, to Uganda, mm -hmm. so it had to be rehabilitated. Okay. So it is something which was necessary to be to be done anyway, regardless of SGR. Uh -huh. Yes. So if Uganda decides they will not pursue the SGR, does it throw us off balance? I don't think they have said that, and I don't want to, to speculate. I think when time comes, they will tell us and we shall discuss the situations. But let's not speculate what other countries intend to do. Okay. Yes. Let, let's listen to Kevin Atanda. Is that the name from Ruaraka? Kevin, good morning. What question do you have for Waziri? Uh, I'm calling from uh, Ruaraka. Yes, carry on. Yeah, uh, on the issue of uh, the housing, uh, the, 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 the housing uh, project. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know from uh, the Wazir, what about these people? Uh, some of us who are not working with uh, the government, who are doing, uh, you know, the daily chores in uh, the mm -hmm. So I feel like uh, it could be good if they came up with another program that could uh, also enable us also to make some uh, small contributions because mm -hmm. we are also living in uh, the informal sector. Okay, okay. Yeah. Th and, and then mm -hmm. to, to Wazir, I usually admire his work. He's really working very hard, and we, for example, I personally, you know, I'm a graduate, and uh, you know, Waziri kama kuna kazi give us. <laughs> All right, <laughs> uh, th th thank you, Kelvin Atandi from Roraka. He's uh, he's happy with what you do, and also asking for a job on there. <laughs> uh, but uh, his question specifically on the, the informal sector, because mm -hmm. what you have said, the contribution of 1.5 percent <clears throat> is for those people who are salaried. Mm -hmm. How about those who? Um, the informal sector per se, how will they benefit? Because they also live in this country. Well, I think, um, yes, <clears throat> two things. I think um, for Kevin to know uh, how the informal sector will benefit. Uh, number one, they are also allowed to contribute, but on a voluntary basis, mm -hmm. right? Um, so as much as, as they want or they can afford to contribute, they are, mm -hmm. we are happy to receive their contributions. Mm -hmm. So even in this portal, mm -hmm. which uh, we are re registering people, mm -hmm. we are also open mm -hmm. to informal people, the informal sector. Mm -hmm. now, in fact, we even said, for example, like the Matatu people who, st you know, who work at the stages, um, they are allowed to do all that. So, okay. so they're not you know, shut out. Mm -hmm. They are allowed to participate. Okay. Even more importantly, Kevin, we have put a mechanism in place whereby all the inputs, mm -hmm. or majority of the inputs of these houses will come from the Juwakari sector. Okay. So we have standardized doors, locks, and windows, and we are giving those designs to Juwakari uh, organizations. Already we have signed with three of them, so that they can produce these inputs and create jobs for our people. All right. So when we say we shall be creating 350,000 uh, formal jobs, we are also saying that figure times eight 
of informal sector as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Because all the ones on Gong Road, Gekomba, Kamukonji, we've already uh, been engaging them to see how they can supply these inputs. That would be the biggest benefit in terms of them uh, benefiting from this project. Okay, all right, Kelvin, for that question. I hope you've benefited from the response. I want to focus on something else that um, is to do with the uh, transport sector. Uh, <coughs> In, in May, in May 2018, you came out alongside the uh, cabinet secretaries uh, Farida Karunei, um, uh, CS Tobiko, as well as uh, CS Balala, and you said of promises that you are going to bring buses. You told us that time that 30 buses had been ordered and would be delivered in six weeks, that by, Jamu, uh, by Madaraka they would have them. It's mm -hmm. 10 months on. We haven't seen them. Well, I think let me clarify. Yes, there was a plan to bring the 30 buses mm -hmm. uh, through the na National Youth Service. But eventually we said to make sure we have buses which are fully BRT compliant, meaning bus rapid transit system mm -hmm. compliant. Let's import buses which are compliant fully. Because if you bring the 30, we still have to dispose them off thereafter after we include, after we actually now bring the BRT compliant buses. Mm -hmm. So now, the fact of the matter is, we have actually um, gone and identified the first batch of 64 buses. Mm -hmm. uh, out of those, 32 will be coming very, very shortly because the procurement process has been completed. And for this, I need to clarify it because this matter has been raised many times. Why are you still buying locally? Mm -hmm. We do not have, as of now, BRT compliant buses. So what we said, we have given the samples to the nine players mm -hmm. who are in this industry private sector. of the uh, private sector mm -hmm. and told them that we initially let's just import that 32 out of 34. This company which we is bringing them has agreed to assemble the balance of 32 buses mm -hmm. in thicker. Mm -hmm. And then we shall have now 64 initial batches. Okay. Thereafter, mm -hmm. we have given these specifications to the private sector and they'll be bringing them so they'll be assembling them here. Okay. So it's for those um, private players to go to Isuzu, to go to Mercedes, to go to other places, Toyota, and have them done locally. What you do not want to do is to bring buses which are not compliant. Because a simple example, mm -hmm. in a bus you see with a step, that is not compliant. Because this BRT must cater for the disabled, mm -hmm. must cater for the old, and so forth. But if you bring buses with steps, then it does not comply and it does not meet the requirements of those you know, vulnerable groups. Well, that's, why, that's why you have to do it that way. Okay, Waziri, we saw a case study of uh, Tanzania on how they have done their BR3 system and they have dedicated roads for that. In Kenya we don't have. Why don't we and why aren't we building the current construction of, uh, constructions of roads? Why aren't we customizing them for that kind of uh, uh, technology? The problem is, uh, Sam, when you start doing BRT, uh, like 40 years behind schedule. Mm -hmm. That's the problem you face because you do not have proper or, or a compliant infrastructure. There are some routes here where even if you try, you will not be able to have BRT because the design of the roads were not done in compliance with BRT. Mm -hmm. However, where the roads are compliant for BRT, we shall be fast tracking that process. For example, after bringing these 32, uh, for that 64 buses, we have said also we are bringing the trains, which already uh, are the procurement as well. Okay. What we are calling DMUs, the uh, diesel multiple units. They come to Nairobi Central Station, then the buses you take up from there. Okay. If you look at more Avenue, that can be comp easily be structured as BRT. If you look at Harambe, and uh, Harambe, uh, you know, this uh, Hezalasi, mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. So certain routes will be, will be possible. Mm -hmm. But there are some areas which require a lot more investment. That's why we're working with our partners, the European Union, the European Investment Bank, to be able to help us with the uh, infrastructure required. Okay. Even on thicker road as well, which requires stations uh -huh. uh, to be done. And that's why, let me also mention this, um, because it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, people may, may have asked, why did we defer this issue about the car free days? Right. And we did so uh, mm -hmm. because of two reasons. Mm -hmm. First of all, the issue of bringing traders who are not vetted mm -hmm. through, the, through the BVR because of security reasons mm -hmm. became an issue. And so we have to make sure they are meticulously vetted. Anybody coming to the city to do that trading in the car free days. Okay. Secondly, we wanted to align it with when we bring these now buses and the trains so that people have got 
alternative means of, means of transport. Okay. And thirdly, although people did not really, um, I think, um, appreciate, we were only starting with a very small section, very the small city. nucleus within the city. Mm -hmm. So it was not going to cause a big problem in terms of inconvenience of mm -hmm. our people. Oh, all right, so, so when, when should we see a car free being implemented in this country? Uh, when we do complete vetting of BVR, we are satisfied that there are no security risks. Mm -hmm. And when we have now these BRTs and the trains coming in, which as I said, they are on the way, the first batch. Wazir, we have so many questions uh, coming in through text and uh, on Twitter, including one someone asking why the Ngong Road uh, is taking so long to finish, especially because it's divided into different phases. Uh, the Japanese contractor is almost completing his work, but there's another contractor that is working on uh, the phase from, let me get that right. Um, Junction. Yes, from Junction going in t towards Ngong, it's mm -hmm. taking so long. Well, um, we got support from the Japanese government from, for Lot 1 and 2. Yeah? Lot 1, which was finishing at uh, Prestige Plaza, mm -hmm. then from there to Junction. Um, that money was av availed. Mm -hmm. But we also said, mm -hmm. if we stop there, mm -hmm. it will clog up that major infrastructure <coughs> investment. Okay. So with our own funds, despite our struggle, in terms of getting adequate financing, because you know there are many projects which are competing for the same funds, mm -hmm. we decided to do with our own GOK funds. Mm -hmm. Now from Junction all the way to Karen. Mm -hmm. And that will open up the entire route. But already work is underway. But also more importantly, because this, this can, uh, Nairobians need to know. Mm -hmm. You know, we have completely created a ring road mm -hmm. going around the city of Nairobi. Southern Bypass was finished and opened, if you remember, some close to about two years ago. Right. With our Eastern Bypass mm -hmm. going to Roiro. Mm -hmm. We have Northern Bypass going to Ruaka. Mm -hmm right, finished, mm -hmm. and then already now we have signed the final phase, mm -hmm. which is uh, from Ruaka to the Nairobi Nakuru Highway. Right. Uh, already the contractor is on site. Mm -hmm. So that ring road, we hope has a lot in terms of making sure the congestion of the city is dealt with Does not adequately come into the, does not and come permanently. Into the city. Yes. All right. Um, um, the road connecting industrial area around BAT, joining Likoni Road and all through to Donholm, it's been a bad state for eight years. Nothing is happening. Well, that must be the one uh, enterprise, Riconi. Mm -hmm. um, the contractor, we had issues, that I must, I must admit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same one doing this Westlands Ring Road uh, West, in Westlands. It's an Israeli company uh, without it yet capacity, but we have had issues. And we have said it publicly that they will not get any more work here until that project is completed. Will they give us back the money? Well, well they have to invest because, see, it's, it's a partnership. When a client comes and says they have capacity, mm -hmm. they don't have to wait to be paid. Okay. We have to pay them, yes, but they have to put their resources, mm -hmm. just like other companies do, with their own balance sheets, and then we pay them later.